Hello, Jackalope, Freedom Fest, Love Festival, beep, beep. No State Solution. Hello, everybody. My name is Derek Bros. Um, wherever you are, yeah, I, I am. I'm here to just talk briefly. Um, Alma invited me to come talk, to come check out what it's like here at Jack Fest. And I think it's awesome to see freedom-minded people coming together, doing business together without a license, um, working to use non-state currency, working outside of the system whenever possible. My main focus of activism tends towards the actual physical practice of making agorism a reality. Uh, whether that's with my personal business, which is called Organic Gardens for All. I'm an independent gardener. I sell non-GMO seeds. I build gardens. I do landscaping, all organic, um, promoting you know independent thinking, sustainability. And I do that without a license. I do that in the community. Uh, we accept silver, Bitcoin, all that good stuff, trade, barter. And then also as an activist and as a journalist working for various uh, independent news outlets, uh, from Ben Swan and also the Occupy website, which is pretty interesting writing for a crowd that despite be calling themselves Occupy and saying they're against corporate corporations, when I get paid, I get paid through PayPal from Occupy Incorporated. That's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so I focus on how I can push these ideas because I do think that agorism is going to be the transitionary period from where we take ourselves from dealing with small pockets of people who are using silver, or using Bitcoin, using cryptocurrency, trading, bartering uh, directly with each other outside of the state. As that moves and grows, we're going to see this this period where agorism becomes the norm. And then as Samuel Conkin talked about the New Libertarian Manifesto and the Agorist Primer, that we would go on to better, uh, more important things. We'd stop having to worry about the state, have to stop having to fight statism constantly, and we could go on to more important ways of living. So I try to make that a reality as much as possible, and of course we all have different lives, we come from different places, I'm here from Houston, Texas, uh, we've got different uh, factors in our, in our lives that affect us. I happen to be going on 30, free, childless, and have the opportunity to travel pretty often and to live a full agorist life outside of the state. I haven't paid taxes in going on four years, um, I haven't had any... All my jobs have either been cash paying or Bitcoin pay or direct services to service. And, and that's something that I've, I have the freedom to, to be able to do. So I try to live my life as much in that way as an example to show other people how it can be done. And then, of course, the way anarchy works, you guys, we all learn from each other. And we figure out, okay, well, my situation is a little different, but I can apply that knowledge in this way. So I've been going on, I set my second bike tour. In May, I came through here to Arizona. I went from Houston to Austin to El Paso through New Mexico and on a bicycle, not a motorcycle, a bicycle. Um, just basically spreading the ideas of freedom and of agorism and documenting with my camera and through my various sources, uh, through the website I run, theconsciousresistance.com, the Conscious Resistance Network, putting out the message, showing people that, hey, despite activists and libertarian volunteers whatever label you want to apply talking about the evils and the ills of the state and the government there's plenty of positive things happening in the world there's plenty of communities that are doing great things that are learning how to uh, take care of animals themselves how to provide services for themselves and showing people that the fallacy that without the state without the government you know we would fall apart and we would have something like the scenes we see in that movie Purge, where everybody is just ready to kill everybody. You know, oh, the government's gone, so it's time to kill and be nuts. Obviously, we know that we have kids here, we have people open carrying, we have people playing music, all kinds of things. People doing being free, and we're all we all look different. We all, uh, you know, like I said, we come from different places. This is what freedom looks like, and so I think that getting past the ideas of, of voting at the very least on the federal level, you know, you can still do some stuff on your local level. I've seen it happen. I think there's some good work to be done on the local level. But getting past those ideas and recognizing that the strongest way that we can fight the state is in our personal interaction. So mainly my point of being up here today is just to say that what I've learned by traveling and meeting people in Arizona and California and Texas and New York and then people outside the United States who have a viewpoint where they look to the United States and they see something great slowly disappearing and they're like, wow, we already live in a totally socialist nation. I have some good friends from Denmark who have great insight to what it's like to live in a socialist nation where you have to have your 
weapon completely dismantled and put into a safe, and if you defend your home, you'll be arrested and, you know, you'll spend your life behind bars and the other person will go free. So it's been great to learn from people by traveling and trying to bring this message and learning and teaching and growing with each other. And I think the more we we, we take these these examples, you know, we, our, our, our podcasts and our blogs and our websites and all our businesses are great online. And of course, we've seen massive growth through this movement through the internet in the past four or five years. But without applying them to the real world and getting out from behind the computer screen like everybody here is doing today and meeting other individuals and finding ways to, uh, to put these things into action, we're not going to see the state go anywhere. I mean, we may delude ourselves into thinking because we have the community of people that everything's great, but outside of the, this, uh, this little area that we've made for ourselves, the state still exists and they're still enslaving people and there's still a lot of horrific things being done by all of us uh, at the various times we pay taxes so that go towards funding the wars, that go to funding the drug war, and all the other things that you guys already know about that are the problems that come with the state. So uh, my main focus is in, in, in back in Houston is taking my gardening business and work making a tangible, realistic business that I can employ all my friends so we can all get off the grid and stop paying taxes and at the same time learning gardening knowledge and sustainable knowledge and then spreading that to our other community members and my hope is that for every garden I build somewhere that person might take it more seriously and learn to uh, to take care of themselves or at least if the shit hits the fan they have a, you know maybe a week's worth of food for themselves you know so through spreading it through business and spreading it through activism through writing and just through community activism uh, also being involved, I'm really involved in the, the community art and music scene in Houston and just working with other artists and what I've seen and what I've felt and I think we also saw some of this during you know, Ron Paul's run pushing the, the youth, the college kids to wake up to the idea of liberty is that making a culture out of this is where it's really going to happen, bringing together music and art and you know, conferences are great those serve a certain type of person, and you know, I'll get dressed up and I'll be at the, so, some of those events, but then obviously some people want to come out here to the campgrounds and be out here and experience it in a more lively way. And in the same sense, there's going to be some, you know, some younger dude out there, some younger lady who will come because they want to hear some music, and then at the same time they get exposed to new ideas. So I think it's just about, at this point we already recognize, okay, there's other people across the country who think like me. They see that there's a problem with the state. They see that there's a problem with the current government we have, and that they might, the solutions might not be in the political arena. So we find each other, we start building these little pockets of agorism and independence and volunteerism. But beyond that, we have to create tangible solutions for the rest of the people who are still in the matrix, so to speak. And that's my point, is that we start building these things and, you know, I'm sure we all have various options to go get land and just get out of here. We could just bug out and not have to worry about everybody else. We could just stay away and do our own thing. But there's not enough of us to really create a realistic community that can sustain itself and at the same time could withstand the threat of violence from the, the state, which is what they're always going to resort to. You know, we've seen this happen in the past. If, if you build a community, and whether it's based on the philosophy of liberty or religious perspective or whatever it may be, eventually, if you're out there being too free, they're going to come for you. And you need to have enough, uh, you know, enough people to deal with that. I'm not even saying for the threat of violence. You know, even without that scenario, if we want to realistically free people, we have to build. We have to build these solutions. And I guess for me lately, I've been I've been recognizing more and more that my perspective on freedom, it doesn't end just with my own personal freedom. That I can't just go get the land and take me and my best friends and build everything I want and and live my life there if I know that there's other people out there still suffering from the violence that comes from the state. So I feel like until we're all free, we're, we're never going to be free. You know, we're never truly going to be free if there's always going to be the threat of that state coming. You know, I mean, we can stay out there and stay on the land and stay off the grid and maybe five, ten years, everything will be great. But there's always going to be that threat. You're always going to be living in the fear of the state coming after you as long as they exist. So the solution then is that we have to build tangible tangible uh, solutions that people can grab, Bitcoin, you know, silver, all these various things, institutions that operate outside the mainstream. And this becomes, this is becoming more and more realistic. If you've been paying attention to the situation in Detroit at all, and you've seen how, in the absence of a government there, many people are moving out there now. You know, they're shutting off the water to thousands and thousands of homes out there. Activists are coming together and voluntarily choosing to help each other. You know, the, the state's not there. The, the, all the politicians that are left are pretty much they're pretty corrupt. You know, they, they're their last mayor serving a prison sentence right now. There's tons of corruption around there. 
And as far as if you care about constitutionally, there's tons of things happening out there that are unconstitutional that continue to happen as uh, the city of Detroit saves itself, uh, and I mean the leadership, the politicians save themselves and their corporate partners, but the people themselves are suffering. But that off offers an amazing opportunity for uh, liberty-minded volunteers to go to Detroit where the land is cheap and the house is cheap and to build communities. I'm trying to basically take an expedition of liberty-minded people who want to go up there and spend at the very least a week or two weeks out there. I, you know, I know people out there who are involved with the water fight and community gardens and there's also Detroit Threat Management that some of you may have heard of. It's basically an independent private contractor that protects domestic violence victims. It offers an independent alternative to the Detroit Police Department. Uh, last year, the Detroit Police Department notoriously uh, got known for taking up to 58 minutes to respond to emergency calls. So, and you know, people joke, you know, when you need the police, they're always minutes away. Well, in Detroit, they're hours away. You know, and that's, I mean, it's just because they don't have enough money. There's not enough money for the fire departments. They're using old, shitty equipment. I mean, it's just, it's getting rough out there. But the people, not surprisingly, but the opposite of what we've been told, the people are coming together, they're finding solutions. So the police are failing, the, the police chief tells the citizens, you need to arm yourself, you need to learn to defend yourself because criminals are out there, we can't respond quick enough. So he's telling them, you know, despite what gun control activists want to say, the police chief out there is saying, it's practical for you to, to defend yourself. He's like, we're not looking for vigilantes, we're just telling people, don't let yourselves be a victim. And so there's, he's telling them to arm themselves, to, to learn self-defense, Detroit Threat Management is popping up to offer them an alternative to the failing police department. The water situation is happening, activists are coming there, community gardens are popping up all over. There's a thriving community that's still there. People, you know, massive waves of people left as the industry failed in Detroit, but people are still coming in, new people are coming in, the community is staying there. And I think it's a great time, it's a great example for people to show a realistic example of how how the future could look. You know, we're fed this this idea that without the government, it's gonna be, like I said earlier, the purge, end of the world, Armageddon, apocalyptic, and in the state, FEMA's gonna come swoop in and save us all, right? Well, if you if you don't want to go down the street to the FEMA trailers and take, the, you know, whatever they're offering, or you don't wanna go loot and riot whenever people are going crazy, then you have another option, you have a third option. You can build now, and build now, and get, get your feet and your, your hands in the dirt and trenched in your community, meet other people in your community who are minded like this, start building solutions now, so that later, when we need these things, if we do need them, they'll already be there. And maybe, maybe it will never happen. Maybe the government will just go away because our ideas are so good and they'll realize that they're just a force of violence. Or maybe these ideas will overtake. Either way, if we build the solutions now, I believe that we're gonna save ourselves a lot of heartache later. So that's just a little bit of what I've what I've been picking up on the road, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you. My name is Derek Bros again. Thank you.